We have seasons where we go through storms. And we have also seasons, like I said, where we disobey God. Yes. And I can say that last year probably, or two years ago, was probably one of my seasons where I disobeyed God. I thought God was talking to me, and then I was like, I want to go to an English church. I want to find an English church for you know my children. I know this is what God wants me to do. But then I remember speaking to some people, like Jocelyn. She was like, did you pray about it? And I'm like, yeah, I prayed. She was like, but did he give you an answer? And I was like, I prayed about it. Like, how many times do you want me to pray about it? Like, I prayed, like, several times. She was like, but did he confirm? And I said, I know what God is telling me. I could feel it. No, I didn't. I, just because I prayed a few times and maybe I heard, like, something in English, I was like, oh, they're talking to me. And it's like, no. So I end up leaving. I stopped working with Hope and Elis, so I'm back on Hope and Elis team, but I worked for Hope and Elis team for about five years at the time. Wow. And I remember telling, I remember telling Douglas and Jen, like, hey, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm more worried about other people's kids. Like, I feel like I have to focus on my kids and my family, and I feel like um, there's gonna be a bit of a change. And I didn't tell them exactly what was gonna happen, but I just, sooner or later I started, I stopped coming to Sundays, you know, pastor started noticing I was taking out a few weekends. I would probably come once a month. And to me, I thought like I was coming more frequent, frequent, but a lot of people were like, where have you been? I decided to go to an English church. It was much smaller. I saw that the environment was a little bit different. It wasn't what I was used to, what I was raised to. You know, I'm raised with the congas. I'm raised with like <laughs> hype music and it's on fire. And I'm like, you know, I'm gonna try it because it's for my kids and, you know, they're speaking in English and my daughter likes to teach her, the Sunday school teacher, so I'm gonna thug it out, you know? But every time I went, I'm like, man, my spirit is not right, you know? And it was different. It wasn't like, come to the altar, like on your own. Mm -hmm. It was more as, would you like to give a prayer request? And it's like, I can't give the prayer request because there's men here and like, I'm not gonna go and just put my business out. I don't know these people, like, that's not what I do. And I'm like, to a milk from my husband, I'm like, why we don't go to the front? Like, is this different? Like, is that one of the rules here? And you know, I started to feel uncomfortable. So then I stopped going to that church. Then all of a sudden I just stopped going to church. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Every Sunday, me and my husband would have this conversation as, are we going to La Biblia, or are we gonna look for another church? And it's the conversation of, but the kids need English, and I'm like, can we just try to go to La Biblia? Like, you know, and it was more me and him just going back and forth on what we wanted for our kids, right? And I know some of you here may not have kids, but one day you will, so you'll understand what I'm talking about in a few years, and you'll understand that what I'm talking about with the, having a discussion with your spouse and something where you both have to be one and make a decision. But at this point, we just wasn't making a decision. Well, because I noticed, and I started talking to God and I said, look, I think you didn't confirm, but I just went ahead and did what I wanted to do. And I know that people have been praying for me and I know you've been giving me a word and I know that my calling is to work with the youth. And I know that you have a purpose for me, but now I feel like I can't go back to La Biblia because, you know, they, you know, what are they gonna say? Or like, maybe they're gonna be like, well, where have you been? What have you been doing? I don't want people to be in my business. So I started to feel sad. I started to watch Snapchat videos of like events that was happening at church, and I was like, oh my gosh, like they're having so much fun, and I'm over here in the in my room not doing nothing on a Sunday, like I'm being miserable. So I kept being, what is that word? I kept being stubborn. I remember Jocelyn, she was like, hey, there's the camp for the homeless and homeless, and I'm like, okay. I've done two already, but I was like, it was their third one, so I was like, all right, what? She was like, are you going? Me? Go? I can't go. I can't just go because there's an event, though. That's what I said. And she was like, Nikki, you've been working for the youth for a long time. Like, I know you want to support. Like, I know you. And I'm like, look, you don't know. 
She's like, I know you, I know you, I know you. And I'm like, you don't know me. Like, you don't know how I feel right now. And I remember the tension was thick. She used to talk to me and counsel me in her office at work. And it was just hard, right? I started seeing how the camp was going. People had new shirts. It was the color blue. And we used to have gray. And I was like, I want that shirt. And then someone did the flyer. And I used to do the flyer. And I was like, oh my God, they replaced me. And I felt torn. I felt so sad. <laughs> I was like, yo, they just, I've been replaced. And the enemy was like, you dang all right, you wouldn't replace. And we can replace it like that, like this. Someone can come and take your idea and do exactly what you do. And God doesn't care about you. And that's why you're here sitting here. And I was being tormented within myself. Mm-hmm fighting something. I knew that God gave me a calling, Mm -hmm. but I didn't know how I can go back. But God was there all along, Mm -hmm. through all the tears, all the frustration, all the depression that I went through through that time, because I did. I went through it, and now I know how it feels like when people go missing, Mm -hmm. and we don't call, Mm -hmm. we don't do a text message, we don't be like, yo, you (laughs) like? I only had Jocelyn to hit me up, and I was just like, you know what? I know that God put me through that process in a weird way. All this had to happen because now I can come back and be like, I know what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. I know how we can try to get the youth back because I had to go through that and feel that, right? Really? So, yeah. so when I finally started to come back to church, it was a dama crecido. And Jocelyn was like, look, um, I spoke to Doug. We had a private meeting with Jocelyn and my husband and Juan, and it was just like, Nikki, what's wrong with you? It was kind of an intervention. I know some of us had it before, and it's okay. Um, Sometimes our closest friends have to check you, and they have to be like, this ain't you. Who's the Nikki? Who's the Marco? Who's the Alexa? Who's the Lily that we know? Where is that person, the person that was called? Wow. You have a mission to do. Amen. Okay, we all have a purpose here, let me tell you. And I said it before in my other preaching, but I'm going to say it again because there's some people that are new here today. If you were born, guess what? If you're breathing right now, you have a purpose. Yes. Amen. And if you're here and you heard the word Jesus, yes. that's yes. it. Yes. If someone spoke to you once upon a time about Jesus, and you just no didn't escaping. say yes or no, God is going to knock and knock and knock, and he's a gentleman. Mm -hmm. He's not going to force himself upon you. Mm -hmm. And there's chances after chances that people get, but sometimes God is like, this is your time. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. And that wasn't part of my notes, but Mm -hmm. I was talking, so. Yeah. 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 Um, Moving forward. When the storm was happening, and like I said, I went through my storm, and I could tell you multiple storms. I could tell you it was a tough year for me and my husband. He went through his own storm where I felt like I couldn't help him at that moment. He couldn't help me in my moment. It's like, even though you're spouses, you go through your own little storm. Because yes, yes, we are one, but God is like, um, your spiritual life is still your spiritual life. And your spiritual life is still your spiritual life. So y'all better get it together and then become one. Right? Yes. So... When I noticed about Jonah, and I'm like, why did he go the opposite direction? What was wrong? Was he scared? I even, you know, heard my teacher just talking about it too. Like, everyone has their assumptions of why Jonah walked the way, why he went the other way. You know, a lot of the times people say that Jonah, he was judging people. Yes, he was a prophet. Yes, you know, God used him. But at the same time, he didn't believe that these people could be saved. Thank you, Mark. (laughs) So while this storm was happening, the sailors, they had no idea what was going on. So they went to the lower deck, and they're like, you, you're the only new guy on the ship. I need you to get up, (laughs) okay? They were like, you need to get up. What is going on? I think this is your fault. He was like, "Hmm, well, 
They're like, who, who are you? Where did you come from? What's your occupation? Like, what's your size? What's your height? What's your social? I don't know if they had social, but you know, they imagine, right? These little, like, rocks, and they're like, oh, come on. <laughs> but he was like, in verse 9, chapter, um, chapter 4, verse 9, it, he said, I am Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. They're like, so your God is doing this? He is doing all this commotion? What what are you going to say to your God? Like, what can he do? How can he stop it? And he was like, well, I could say probably, but you know, better yet, just toss me off. Toss me off the boat. Now, I could imagine if someone was like, yo, kill me. And I'm like, I don't want your blood in your hands. I'm not trying to go to jail, you know? So that's literally what he was saying to them. Just toss me off. Just do the work. It'll be easy for you. You will go safe, safely where you came from, and I'm over here in the water. I'll be fine. And I'm thinking, like, if someone was to ask me that, no, I couldn't do it. I'm like, I guess we all just going to be thugging it out together on the boat. <laughs> I guess we're going to be rocking them, you know? <laughs> but there are times where... You know, even though we run from God's purpose that he has on us, we sometimes hit this huge stumbling block where it hits you in the face and you're like, mm. yeah. where am I at? How did I get here? Yeah. All this destruction around me and the only one that can help me is God. Mm-hmm. It's not my yeah. friend. Mm-hmm. Even though your friend can check you, yeah. but they can only do so much. Mm-hmm. Please believe your friends and your mom and your dad only do so much. Yes. God knows who you are. Amen. He knows what you're thinking about. He knows your desires in your heart. He knows your thoughts. Amen. He knows everything. Yep. yep. I don't know nothing. Mm-hmm. And I tell my son this all the time. I don't know what you're going through. I mean, I could pray. I could ask God to tell me, you know, some visions, you know. I don't usually get them like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> a milker does. I don't, but I'm like, you got to tell me what you're going through because I don't know. You know, but God knows everything. Mm-hmm. If I'm not around, I can cover you with that blood. I can pray for my Amen. kids. I can pray for the youth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys can be protected oh so much, but you have to do your part. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. Okay? Okay. You can't just only be like, I feel my mommy. She has to pray for me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we may forget. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> You know, so when they tossed Jonah out, he was in the water. Quickly, God told the big fish to go swallow him. Now, I don't know how this conversation happened. I can only imagine in my visual. I'm kind of like a little kid, too, at the same time, because I like cartoons, and I like, you know, I have younger kids, so I watch Disney as well. I'm thinking of, like, Nemo. You know, when the whale comes, and he's like, you know. I'm like, how did you talk to him? Like, how did you just... You know, but God is God, so he could do whatever he wants. So he's probably, like, moving the, the big fish, like, opening his mouth, put Jonah in, you know? Um, so while Jonah was in there, he was in there for three days. And I can only imagine his suffering inside. I don't know what a big fish looks like inside the stomach. I can only imagine, you know, the intestines, and I get nauseous just thinking about it. And the smell, you know, smelling like fish. And, mm. and you know... When I was reading chapter 2, close to verse 9, he was kind of complaining to God, like, God, like he was praying. He was like, you know, the seaweed in here. And I'm like, the seaweed? Mm-hmm. Get in your head? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, so he's like, the fish is probably gulping water, and he's over here just like swishing in the stomach. And, you know, he kept, you know, he was praying to God, and he said, um, chapter 2, verse 9, he was like, but I wish, no, but I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. Now he wants to sacrifice, because now he's in the, the bonds of the, the fish. But what I have vowed, I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. So when God hears that God is so merciful, I love him. Mm-hmm. Me too. Because yeah. when I think back and and I had read, you know, this story and I'm like God sent his only son to die on the cross for our sins right so 
God has sent Jonah to go talk to this city, this land, for everyone to stop what they were doing. But somehow Jonah didn't believe, right? But now that God allowed him to get out of the fish, he goes. And while he goes in Jonah chapter 3, he's going through his journey, and he ends up in the city. And he only says, 40 more days in Nineveh, and we'll be overthrown. And I was like, that's not what he said in chapter one. He, I think he kind of said more in depth, but he only said a few words. And just with that few words, mm -hmm. they literally repented and they were sorry. Mm -hmm. These people changed their clothes to show God that I'm sorry. The king came off his throne, mm -hmm. changed his clothes, and sat in ashes. Mm. I was like, why would he sit in ashes for? But that was his representation of God, I am so sorry. This God that is so brand new to us, I am sorry. People started to fast, they didn't eat the animals. They didn't um they didn't even let the animals out, they stored the animals away, they didn't, you know, do the crops, they didn't even get the vegetables, they didn't do nothing, they didn't do no work. Because they wanted to show God, you know what? We are so sorry. And Jonah, because God forgave them, Jonah was so upset. And I'm like, bro, like, why are you being upset for? Why are you so angry? Yes, like, why are you angry at the fact that he was the only prophet that the whole city repented? That I can only imagine the altar call. He only said those few words, and everyone came. <laughs> When there, when I did my first preaching, like, when was it? Last week? <laughs> the 14th. The 14th? I was so nervous to do my first altar call. I kept looking at Pastor like, am I doing the right? <laughs> and then when I look, there's people, and I was like, and I'm like, now I know the feeling of what a preacher goes through. And let me tell you, I know that's my calling, but I, you know, I have my doubts sometimes. I'm like, God, are you sure? Are you sure this is what you want me to do? Because I, I bake, you know, I'm a good mom, <laughs> I, you know, I believe I'm a good wife, you know, I know how to clean, I know how to cook sometimes, I learn, <laughs> you know, um, I'm thinking like, God, like, are you sure this is what you want me to do? So I'm sure Jonah was like, God, I'm not trying to go over there to that city to save something because these people, they were, this city was kind of bad. And I'm sure he was nervous and scared, and he had his doubts like, you want me, you don't want me to go here and say these few words? I'm out, I'm not doing it. But God is so merciful upon these people that he literally <clears throat> forgave them. And God told Jonah, what is your problem? Why are you angry? You wanted me to be angry at 120,000 people? And that's where the story ended. And I was like, hold up, where, what happened to Jonah? Where did he go? <laughs> where did he go? But I understood it. I'm like, okay. <clears throat> like, I can only imagine what God would have done because in the story of Sodom. 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 Thank you. <laughs> they were sinning. And God destroyed that city. You know, wiped it out. There was children there. And even though... The adult was sinning. I'm sure the kids weren't sinning, but they died. Yeah. And God, he forgave them, forgave this city. And I'm like, wow, they didn't even have to wait for Jesus to come. So that's why I'm like, God is so good. Because he was showing us their forgiveness. Amen. Right? He was showing us, like, we can forgive. And sometimes us, we have a hard time. Mm -hmm. Like, it could be over the smallest things. And we're just holding this grudge. Mm. And it's like, why are you holding the grudge? Let it go. Because God forgives so quickly. Yes. Jesus forgives. And that's why he Amen. brought his son to come on this cross to die for our sins. So why are you, that are not Jesus, holding so much pain? Holding it in. Let it go. Yes. Let it go. Yes. You know, I know people have been hurt. And I know that it's painful. But God, if he can take someone's sin and throw it mm -hmm. to the end of the deepest sea, mm -hmm. try 
Try to do that for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Try to do that to your family. Try to do that to your father if they weren't around. Try to do that to your mom if she was working too much. Try to do that for the cousins that probably was bullying. I used to get bullied all the time from my cousins, and I still do, but I love them. Now they come to me like, hey, give me some motivation. And I'm like, oh, but you didn't want me to hang out with you when I was little. <laughs> you know? <laughs> God has a purpose for each and every one in this room. Yeah. And I really do believe that, okay? You could be a nurse, and God puts you to have those hands, healing hands. You could be that teacher that motivates the youth, the students, the counselors. I work at a school, and I don't have a degree to be a counselor, but God got me in there to be a counselor. And I know a lot of people are like, Nikki, are you going to go to school? And I'm like, well, you don't think I don't have the time? I'm doing what God wants me to do. I'm doing the underground counseling. But I know that some of you have some doubts. And I know a lot of times doubt crosses your mind, but I'm here to tell you say no to that doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Say no. We all have a purpose. I'm telling you, I can feel it. That motherly feeling around this room here. I'm telling you, if I can't do something, the next generation is going to do it. We're only planting the seed, honey, and we're only watering it, okay? And I'm going to conclude to this. Jeremiah 29, 11, for the ones that are new, please save this because I reread it till this day. I reread it all the time because... I know it impacts me, and I know that sometimes I have my doubts, and God is like, you better reread what I put in this book mm -hmm. for you. So I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 29, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Mm -hmm. yes. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Yes. Amen. Amen. My God. My God. He has plans to prosper us and not to harm us. And even though we've probably been harmed by others, and he's like, I'm not here to harm you. I created you. Amen. I made you. I molded you. And I can continue molding you. And even though I mold you, it may hurt. Trust me, being changed, it hurts mm -hmm. to start to change. Because people are like, oh, wait, God, what are you doing? He's like, just hold on tighter. <laughs> hold on. Hey, let me take this out. Let me and you're like, whoa, 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 but I kind of, oh, I'm changing, I'm changing. And it's like, yes, you're changing. And it hurts sometimes. And then when he puts you in that oven, and you start to feel that heat, and the ones that know, you know. The ones that don't, you'll, you'll, you'll get there one day. And you're going to be like, oh, and Ronnie Nicole, she said that heat, now I feel it, yeah. <laughs> so I want you guys to rise up today. Because you know,